This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. For the first time tonight, we are getting a look at police body camera video following a shooting that left a black woman dead in Springfield, Illinois. A former Sangamon County Sheriff's deputy is charged with murdering Sonia Massey earlier this month. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. The body camera video shows the moments before, during, and after Massey's death. We've reviewed it carefully and are planning to show it. We want to tell you it's disturbing. We want to give you plenty of warning. So in about one minute, we will play the video of the incident. We encourage you to remove any children from in front of the television as we report on this newly released video. Five in your sides, Megan Kernan is live tonight in Springfield with the latest on this disturbing case and new reaction. Megan. Well, Mike and Kelly, Sonia Massey's family and their attorney just finished speaking here at the Springfield NAACP in what was a highly emotional and powerful press conference. Now, the family has asked for this video to be released to the public. On July 6, Sonia Massey called 911, worried about a possible prowler. This body cam video shows the deputies outside of her home before they go inside. It's from another deputy because prosecutors say Deputy Sean Grayson didn't turn his on until right at the moment of the shooting. Once inside, Grayson allows Massey to move a boiling pot of water from the stove and set it on the counter. The group begins to laugh, but then Massey says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Deputy Grayson then begins to yell at her. She drops the pot and yells, sorry. He then fires three shots, shooting her in the head. We are now going to play the entire exchange so you can see exactly what happened. Now again, we want to warn you, the video is very disturbing. Uh, away, from away from your hot steaming water. Away from my hot steaming water? Yeah. Oh, I would rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You better f I swear to God, I'll f drink your f***ing right. Okay, I'm sorry. Drop the f***ing talk the f***ing talk. Drop the f***ing talk. Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. Shots fired. Now we got a headshot wound to the female. Headshot wound to the female. 1078. I was on, I was on. I'm gonna go get my kit. Now if you head, you're done. You can go get it, but that's a headshot. <clears throat> Dude, I'm not taking boring water. Hey look, it's Right to our feet too. Now, days after the shooting, Grayson was indicted on first degree murder charges. Grayson has held six different police jobs in the past four years, including with the Verdon Police Department in McCoupin County. He was also charged twice, once in 2015 and once in 2016, with driving under the influence of alcohol in McCoupin County. Within the past hour, the attorney for the family, Benjamin Crump, addressed the media here at the Springfield chapter of the NAACP. We also heard from Sonia Massey's father, who both called for full transparency. He engaged her. He went closer to her. Look at the video. Don't take Ben Crump's word for it. He walked around the counter to get a better shot. The only time I'm going to see my baby again is when I leave this world. And I don't ever want anybody else in the United States to join this league. Meanwhile, Massey's death has prompted protests. In fact, right now, there's a rally happening at a park in Springfield to promote peace within the community. We have a crew there and we'll have more coverage tonight at 6 and 10 p.m. Reporting live in Springfield, Megan Kernan, five on your side. And of course, we'll continue to follow this story on air and online. We'll have the full body camera video posted on KSDK.com and our YouTube page. We're posting it to be transparent and so our community can understand exactly what happened. Now to some breaking news. A judge has vacated Christopher Dunn's murder conviction. Dunn served more than 30 years in prison for killing Rico Rogers in 1990. His case was based on testimony from eyewitnesses who both state and defense attorneys now call unreliable. 
The judge says Dunn should be immediately released from custody. Joe Biden's legacy of accomplishment over the past three years is unmatched. Today, we heard from Vice President Kamala Harris in her first public event since President Biden dropped out of the presidential race. With less than a month to go until the Democratic National Convention, the vice president now plans to run against former President Donald Trump. Vice President Harris shattered fundraising records in her first 24 hours running for president. Donors rushed the country, r across the country rushed more than $81 million to help Harris win in November. And our political editor, Mark Maxwell, is here to recap the vice president's big splash into the race, Mark. Hey, Kelly and Mike. Vice President Kamala Harris is racking up record support in short order. It seems the entire Democratic Party is lining up behind her in a swift show of force. But it's not just the big household names you might recognize. Last night, a grassroots group called Win with Black Women hosted a Zoom call. Word quickly started spreading through group chats. And before you knew it, tens of thousands of women had logged on to show their support for Kamala Harris. Support could also mean getting 44,000 women across the country together. Assistant House Majority Leader Jahan Gordon Booth is an Illinois delegate to the Democratic National Convention. The fact of the matter of it is, is that black women um, are the base of the Democratic Party. She joined a Zoom call Sunday night that just kept growing and growing, a sign of life from the grassroots. A jolt of energy. Uh, with the you know selfless action that President Biden took. Missouri Democratic Party Chairman Russ Carnahan said President Joe Biden's exit brought new energy into this presidential race. The last three and a half weeks were some of the toughest weeks um, that we've experienced ever um, in the Democratic Party. At the White House Monday, Vice President Kamala Harris stepped in for the president who's still Good undergoing day. Paxlovid treatment for COVID. Our President Joe Biden wanted to be here today. He is feeling much better and recovering fast and he looks forward to getting back on the road. Gordon Booth acknowledged Biden's disastrous debate performance was wearing on Democrats. Frankly, um, it, it was depressing that someone who had done so much in their role as president just couldn't get the gas uh, in the summer before the election to really take us to where we needed to go. And with his move to step aside coming just four weeks before the DNC, an AP report now suggests Harris may already have all the delegates she needs lined up to secure her nomination. You would typically want to do something like this about a year ago. If there are voices that want to come to the forefront, um, they should be given a path to come to the forefront. But as for me and my vote as a delegate, it goes to Kamala Harris. Monday morning, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker, recently floated as a potential candidate to replace Joe Biden, backed Harris. In a statement, Pritzker said it's past time we shatter that highest and hardest of glass ceilings and finally elect a woman as president of the United States. President Biden is slated to address the nation on camera later this week at some date to be determined. Meanwhile, top Republicans in the U.S. Senate are circulating a memo instructing their GOP members on how best to attack Vice President Harris as too liberal, weird, and to try and blame her for the surge at the southern border. Mark, thanks. And a reminder that Mark will be at the Democratic National Convention next month. He'll have live reports from Chicago starting August 19th. The Secret Service director testifies about the attempted assassination of former President Trump, what she has to say to those calling for her to step down. And our weather allergy index, weeds are low and mold continues high. We had a few showers around, even one that hit Lambert. Nothing severe and nothing with flooding rain. But we'll talk about our storm chances and rain chances coming up.